Hey friend, I'm Wren Robbins, and I'm here to help you establish your authority, take you from obscurity to being known in your niche, so that you can gain clients through your podcast. I started this podcast because I don't want you to wing it on yours. Welcome to Don't Wing It. Let's go. Welcome back to the show. So let's talk about network marketing today. I know it gets a bad rap. Remember the Amway days? But let me shine a light on what network marketing does do really, really, really well. And they have community. They build leadership qualities in their people. And let's be honest, they bring in some dough and they get to stay home with their babies. Okay, so I know it gets a bad rap, but today I want to share with you how strategic podcasting can amplify that network marketer's success. And you're gonna hear the reasons why. So back in December, we started this series for specific online business owners. And In December, in on episode 111, I talked specifically to authors, and it was called Unleashing the Power of Podcasting for Authors, and I'm going to put that episode in the show notes if you're an author and you're like, oh, I need to hear that, or maybe you have an author friend that you would like to forward that to them, I invite you to do that. So again, today we're talking about network marketers. So if you are a network marketer, I'm talking to you today. And so we're going to talk about why strategic podcasting can can amplify your success. And you need, you need to hear the reasons why. So stick around. All right. All right. So I'm going to share with you about six different ways that network marketers can benefit from having a podcast, a strategic podcast, not just a podcast, but a strategic podcast. All right. So number one, we're going to just jump right into it. Okay. I'm going to tell you a few stories of past clients who were network marketers, who are network marketers, and I'll let you hear from them themselves. So The first thing that is a reason why a network marketer would want to have a strategic podcast is that it's going to educate consumers through your podcast. You are going to educate consumers. And then maybe you're like, but Ren, they don't consume yet. Not yet. (laughs) Yet is the key word. And so... um, As you, the network marketer, as you are educating listeners, it's going to provide that education for them. So if you're in a network marketing company, there probably are some trainings that you do. I know that you probably do trainings. You have your upline, you have your downline, and there are trainings involved. And so when you have a podcast, you can provide education And what this does is that it's going to showcase your expertise. So your experiences, your expertise, what you have learned, the knowledge that you have gained, you are going to be able to showcase this in your podcast. And the cool thing about it is that usually those people, potentially those people, those listeners will become consumers. They'll become consumers, and I'm going to t- consumers, and I'm going to tell you a story about that in just a few minutes. But sometimes a 60 second story on Instagram just can't cut it. It just can't cut it. You have more to educate people about. You need to inform them, and so educating has to take place on a platform that has long form content, and educating consumers through expert podcasting is a way to do that. And notice I didn't just say podcasting. I didn't just say that you can educate consumers through podcasting. I said through expert podcasting. And we're going to get back to that in just a little bit. But I wanted to read you a quote 
that I read in an article. I believe it is linked into, I will link it in the show notes. I believe it's from Forbes, but I'm not positive. But it said, by consistently sharing valuable insights, tips, and industry knowledge, network marketers can establish themselves as trusted experts, which can attract a loyal and engaged audience. Loyal and engaged. So when we're talking about advantages, when we're talking about benefits, advantages of how educational podcast can be in network marketing, we're really talking about podcasting in general. Because with podcasting, you remember from last week, we talked about how podcasting will educate, it will inform, it will inspire, and then most of all, it will connect. And so when we're talking about advantages, educationally, we know that that's part of podcasting. So that was number one. Number two, the way that you can encourage and build up the case for podcasting for a network marketer is that you can elevate your leadership through your podcast as a network marketer. All right, so let's talk about this. How can we elevate thought leadership? And Really, I went back down to the definition of what is thought leadership. Like, what is that? Like, I I know what leadership is, and I know thoughts, but combine them together. What is that? And I saw this on a website. I will link it in the show notes as well. But thought leadership is to be inspirational, is to have uh, or share industry trends or industry research. And that's just like what the quote we said earlier, by consistently sharing valuable insights, tips, industry knowledge, network marketers can establish themselves as trusted experts, which will bring the loyal, engaged audience. So back to that inspirational industry trends, industry industry research, those are opinions from simrush.com. And um, it's It's really like taking a stand and saying, that's what it is. Like thought leadership is taking a stand in one direction, putting a stake down and saying, yeah, that's what I believe. And that's what I teach. And that's what leadership looks like. That's what thought leadership is. And that article I'm linking is called Thought Leadership, What It Is and How to Master It in 2024. So thought leadership is going to include experience it's going to include success. So there is a client that was in my last flight group. We started the new one today. I'm so excited. Can't wait uh, for you to get in on that if you are wanting to start a podcast. But I want to tell you a little bit about Dawn. So Dawn Pimbleton is one of my clients from the last flight group. And she started her podcast, A New Day Dawning. Isn't that cute? She has a subtitle uh, so that she has keywords in there. But a new day dawning, she wanted a space to encourage. She wanted a space to share about her life lessons in her experience. She wanted a place, a long form content place where she could do storytelling. Because in her trainings with Hugh and Grace, that is the network marketing company that she is an ambassador for. She is excellent at it. In that, she continued to hear how people on her trainings that she would do with her team, they would say, oh, you're so good with storytelling. Oh, these life lessons, they're so good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I have heard one of her trainings, and it is incredible, incredible how she really was um, servant-hearted servant hearted as she was speaking, but really her storytelling, her life lessons, the encouragement, I left really inspired. And so that's why Dawn started her podcast. Now, she's in network marketing, as I said, and she doesn't necessarily use it to sell Hue and Grace products. She doesn't use it to talk about her products for Hue and Grace. Um, She doesn't necessarily do that. Not that she's always going to do that. But she said to me, 
I said, hey, tell me how it's going. She was like, I love it. I love it. And then she said, I'm going to quote her. She said, starting the podcast has helped me connect with people and has allowed my social media followers to get to know me on a more personal level than they would have if she hadn't started the podcast. She said, I have gained followers from having the podcast and the feedback from my podcast listeners are that they are enjoying the podcast. It has been encouraging to hear. And in fact, her Pure Bar class have been listening because they overheard someone talk to Dawn about it in one of her classes. In one of the Pure Bar classes that she was taking, somebody overheard her talking about the podcast. And so now they're listening. And uh, I just love that ripple effect, don't you? And she even had somebody tell her, Hey, my daughter and I had a discussion about what you talked about on the podcast. You can't tell me. You can't tell me that Dawn is not creating a legacy or creating that thought leadership. She is. She is creating that leadership. And leadership is defined. Of course, you know I'm going to define the word. So leadership is defined as having influence. She's having influence on those, even those in her pure bar class. She's having influence, which is defined. I had to define influence because I was like, okay, we know what leadership is. Now let's define influence. Def- influence is defined as to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior as someone else. So it's having the effect of character or development or behavior of someone Um but also that really kind of spurred, like just sparked the word legacy in my mind. So we're talking about leadership and then it's having influence and influence is having an effect on the character or behavior of someone, which really to me meant legacy. And I want to tell you this quote that Mark Batterson quoted in his book. I'm reading it, but his book, Please Sorry Thanks. I took the book cover off of it. Do y'all do that? Do y'all take book covers off while you read? I did take this one and I stole it from my husband because he was reading it, but I stole it from his bedside because um, I I wanted to read it. So I've read, I think, two chapters in a day. It's so good. I just started it yesterday. Um, Please Sorry Thanks by Mark Batterson. And this is what he said about legacy. Y'all, it's a boom quote. If you've been around here a little bit, you know what a boom quote is, right? It's a quote that really hits home really quickly. It is so fast and it hits home. And he said, he defined legacy as not what you accomplish. It's not what you accomplish, but legacy is what others accomplish because of you. Legacy is not what you accomplish. It's good. It's good what you accomplish. It is. It's great. We're supposed to work. Work hard. Work smart. Work different <laughs> from last week. Remember my different? Legacy is not what you accomplish, but it is what others accomplish because of you. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? That's a boom quote if I've ever heard one. So when you're thinking about thought leadership, And you're, as a network marketer, you're thinking, you know what? That is what I want to do. I want to create legacy. Well, that is how you can elevate your thought leadership through your podcast as a network marketer. You can establish, you can showcase that knowledge that you have. You can give, you know, our words give us life. And I was reading this book again yesterday. And even in the introduction, Mark Batterson was talking about how his, um, our words give life or death. You, we see that in the scripture. Our words can give life or death. And there was uh, a man who was Jewish that he quoted in here that had this um, visual um, and it really, it really was sinking deep in me, and I want to share it with you. So he had this visual where um, our words will either be like a knife or a spoon. It was like one piece, like one piece of wood or metal, and then on one end is a knife, and then picture a spoon on the other end. You can spoon up words of encouragement of that thought leadership, or you can have the knife. And stick it in somebody. 
No, no. Oh, how I want to have the thought leadership of spooning that encouragement, spooning that leadership, spooning that motivation, spooning the encouragement for others. And so I loved that. I love that visual. And so we can give, there can be, life can be in our words. And so we can elevate thought leadership through your network marketing podcast. And so let's go to number three. Number three, another reason, another way to have your expert podcast really um, leave that legacy is growing your connections. You can grow your connections through your podcast. And an- another way, and another way to say it is it expanding your network. Okay, we're going to talk about connection in a minute, but growing your connections with an S is when you expand your network. And strategic podcasting can amplify your success when you are growing your connections. And you can do that with a podcast. So I mentioned Forbes before. There was this Forbes magazine that it's called, uh, this article in the online magazine. And um, it's entitled, Why Podcasting Might Be One of the Best ROI Marketing Channels in 2021 and Beyond. (laughs) I love, I love this. And so this was Forbes. And this was a quote in this article. And it was from this guy, and he is talking about um, when he spoke with Jake Jorgovin, the founder of Content Allies. And this is what Jake said. He said, when I launched my first company, I used a podcast as one of my primary growth channels. At one point, I found that over 68% of our revenue was a result of the guests who I invited on my podcast. Some of them turned into customers. Others referred customers to us. Others invited me to speaking engagements that led to new customers. (laughs) Using my podcast as a networking tool proved to be one of the single greatest drivers of revenue for my business. And so this really is alluding to how when we have a podcast, we are set up as the thought leader. And when we have others on our podcast, those people see us as a thought leader, okay, as the host. And so when we're inviting people on our podcast, they see us as the thought leader, and it increases those connections, those connections with people. And I mean, 68% he saw from their revenue was the result of guests that he wanted to highlight, but they came on his podcast, and that is where those 68% of their consumers came from, um, from those guests. And I think that is incredible. Remember, data don't lie. (laughs) Uh, And so it's really important to pay attention to those who have seen success in that and seen it as they have grown um, their connections, okay? So I talked about connections, so that it's the networking. And I know that y'all know Kim Stewart. She is excellent at this. She is go, goes further. She has people on her show, her podcast, but then she connects them in real life. And she connects them in uh, through email and say, hey, can I ca- connect you to? Um, she connects myself and Ann Watson that was on the podcast a few, uh, about a month ago. She connected us. And so um, she does this so well. I, l- I love Kim and what she brings to that. But it really does, having a podcast does increase your connections. And so um, just think about that as a network marketer when you're in the valley of decision about starting a podcast or not. Okay, so remember, I just talked about, that was number three, connections with an S, plural. But now, number four, okay, remember, we're still continuing to talk about how a strategic podcast can amplify your success. And so this is number four. This is the reason why. Authentic connection through your network marketing podcast. Okay, so authentic connection. (laughs) through your podcast as a network marketer. So you can have connections 
right, that we just talked about through networking, through your podcast, but also you can have authentic, who loves authentic? Raise your hand. I'm raising my hand right now. Authentic, real connection through your network marketing podcast. You can have connection with those people. You know my friend Ruthie Gray, and she has, if you haven't, she was on the podcast. I'll put that in the show notes. But she has a podcast about authentic marketing, right? And that's, we saw that in the trends in the, I think it was the December ep- episode. Uh, no, maybe it was January. One of the January episodes where I talked about how, what we're seeing is in trends for marketing and authenticity is one of the main things. I thought of Ruthie immediately, um, but authentic connection through your podcast And so you can have that authentic connection with potential customer, with a potential consumer. When you consistently hear a real person's voice and you hear them consistently over and over, you can create such a strong connection. You can create such a strong connection than just getting your phone and reading words on a screen. Um, I mean, just really, just really, really. Um, And that personal feeling that you get, it is what makes podcast listeners intensely loyal to their favorite shows, to their favorite brands. If you are a fan of The Office and you have listened to The Office Ladies podcast, do you just fall more in love with them even more, knowing them as a real person, right? Okay, so what I just said about when you consistently hear a real person's voice, that it creates that connection, that was from Forbes again. I think this was an actually different episode, excuse me, a different article, but I'll link that too. But this is what Forbes said. Let me read it. Consistently hearing a real person's voice can create a much stronger connection than reading words on a screen. That personal feeling is what makes podcast listeners intensely loyal to their favorite shows and brands. And you can see this now, like really, you can see this with, are you listening to a podcast sometimes and you're like, oh my word, that host is my best friend. I remember in the early days before I started my podcast, I would listen to Jamie Ivey and be like, we're friends. No, we are not friends, Ren. She doesn't know who you are. Now, later, I was able to interview her and then meet her in person um, uh, in Nashville, in the Nashville area. But um, at that point, I I, I wasn't friends. And, and honestly, if she heard the name Ren Robbins, I don't know. She might not know who I was, you know? like. But I felt connected with her. I felt authentically connected with her because I was listening to her every week on her Happy Hour podcast. So it really shows you that there is authentic con- connection. No matter if it's happened to you with a podcaster, no matter if you heed this advice from Forbes, or if you take one of my clients' advice and take take one of my clients' words for it, her word for it. So you may know Molly Asplin. She is um, a network marketing um, guru. I would call her a guru, a network marketing um, ad- ambassador for Bodhi. So it used to be um, Beachbody, and now it's Bodhi. And she is an incredible leader. I will tell you, I have been so encouraged and lit up from her. I'm not in Bodhi, but I'm just saying from her Instagram and just how she cares for her clients and how she cares for those in her team and her downline and her upline for you on social media. Like, I'm not even in Bodhi and I know she cares deeply about me and and my health and wellness. Like, and so she started a podcast. Um, she has, um, she says this about her podcast. She started the Dream It, Do It podcast a few years back. And she was a VIP client, which was, we spent a VIP day together. And she has just blown it out of the water. And she is doing the things. She learned the skill and she continues to serve her um, clients, her consumers, and her team, and those that are not even on her team yet. I say yet because, listen to what she said. Molly said, podcasting has allowed me to teach and educate in a deeper way than I can than I can on social media. It builds a lot of trust because people could hear my voice and hear my passion 
for what we do. And they could better understand how they would be coached by me. It helped them bridge the gap of how the business opportunity could solve problems in their life. People will join my team and share that they have listened to every single podcast episode. That's before they joined, okay, y'all? She said they start their business in a much better place because of it. They already have the strong mindset and know more about what to expect with working together. And I want to tell y'all, that was her quote. She sent me that yesterday. And in fact, I want to tell you, there was a gal that I remember Molly telling me this. I don't remember the gal's name, but Molly said after two weeks of her launching her podcast, Molly launching her podcast, the Dream It, Do It podcast, she said that this gal was ready to jump into Molly's team. I remember she told me that years ago when it happened. But the funny thing is when I asked Molly about it, she said, Ren, Literally, there have been so many, and she put the so many in all caps. She said, literally, there have been so many added to her team that have come from her podcast. And so that, if you don't listen to what Forbes says, you don't listen to what I say, you don't listen to what maybe um, you say about podcasting and, and really feeling connected to that podcast host, take Molly's word for it. She has had so many added to her team that have come from her podcast. And I love that she said that it really bridges the gap of the business opportunity that it can solve people's problems. And that's why she's been so good at her podcast and connecting and really having that connection with people is because she cares so deeply and she's a ser- have, has a servant heart with it. Okay, so that was number four. Oh my goodness, so many. I don't, it, what, how long have we been going? 27 minutes, we gotta go. Okay, so I'm almost done. <laughs> so uh, last one, uh, last two, oh, last three. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, number five. So uh, we're looking at the benefits of how strategic podcasting can amplify our message in our network marketing business. Number five is network marketing podcasting is excellent for lead generation, for lead generation. And I'm going to quote again, I'm going to quote Forbes because this article was just packed full. And I think there were actually, there might've been two separate articles, but I know that one that I'm going to link why podcasting might be one of the best ROI marketing channels in 2021 and beyond. Um, And this is what it said in that article. It said, by including calls to action within their episodes, such as directing listeners to a website or offering exclusive resources, network marketers can capture contact information and expand their network. We already talked about their network, expanding their network. We also uh, are talking about now uh, offering their resources, directing listeners to a website, their lead generation. If you want more people on your email list, start a podcast. You want more people talking about what you offer, start a podcast. You want to expand your network, start a podcast. You want to capture contact information like an opt-in, start a podcast. Want to give people calls to action without feeling icky, start a podcast. So it really does help you with your lead generation. I had a gal that was interested in my challenge because she was listening to my podcast last month. And it it's just a natural way when people feel connected, like go back number four, when people feel connected, it will lead them to your opt-in. It will lead them to coming back for more. And so when you think about starting a podcast for your network marketing business, you have to look at how it can grow your lead generation for sure. All right, that was number five. All right, number six, two more, y'all. We got this. I'm just getting passionate. I'm getting stirred up. I'm getting like feisty about it. I'm about to go live for Wednesday on Instagram. I'm, I'm pumped up. Okay, number five. We just did number five. Number six, number six. Here we go. The convenience of podcasting for a network marketer is a very valid reason 
to start your podcast. The convenience of podcasting. And I want to I want you to think about this. So it's the flexibility and the convenience as a podcaster who wants to grow their network marketing business, okay? So it's really like if you think about flexibility and you think about convenience and you're thinking about your schedule, you're probably the 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 person that is in network marketing so that you can either earn a side income or earn some extra money while you're staying home with your kids. So if you are that person as a network marketer and you're like, I want to stay home with my kids. I want to raise some, uh, I want to have some extra money. I want to do something I'm passionate about that I love. I love health. I love health um, beauty products that are healthy, that are clean. Um, I want to um, encourage people with their um, their makeup, with their um, confidence. If that is you, it really shows that you want flexibility. You want that convenience in having a podcast. So maybe you're a full-time mama or you're a work from home, home grandmother, or you're a work from home mom, and you probably have other things on your plate. Maybe you go to work every day, and then on the side is your network marketing business, and you're wanting to grow that in order to quit your job and to do network marketing full time. Or maybe you're just like, I just want to serve. I want to serve, just like Dawn. I want to serve those people that are in my realm, that are either if it's at my pure bar class or in network marketing or in um it, as a thought leader i want to do that so you can do that with your podcast the flexibility of it you can podcast from your closet you can podcast when you feel like it it's the convenience of it there is not anything else you can do that is up to you on your time that's not necessarily driven by an algorithm where you can still get your message out and have the flexibility and have it for lead generation than a podcast. It is flexible and convenient with your schedule as you are a network marketer. You would think I was a network marketer, right? I'm just getting fired up. I just love serving you and and serving you in different areas of what you do in your business, other online businesses. Uh, I, I love it. And so I know you're hearing that, but um, but it really is the convenience of of podcasting for you as a network marketer that is on the go. And so one other thing, so this is number seven. That was number uh, six. Number seven is very similar to that, but it's different. There is a difference in it. And number seven is the freedom to post and talk about what you do. Now, I just said flexibility and convenience, and this is kind of another part of that, but it is a little different because when you have freedom to post, I can have freedom to post. And I'm not a network marketer, but as a network marketer, you may say, you know, I'm I really um I want to talk about certain things, but I don't know um it, it might look differently than somebody else. The beauty of a podcast is the freedom you have to talk about what you want to. You can tell what the temperature is of your group, your in your in your team or in your downline or the people and the questions you're having on social media. You know those objections. You can tell the temperature of your team or in your successes or in those objections. And you know what they're needing from you. You know what those people that are on the edge and they're about to join your network marketing team and you're like, they're right on the edge, but they're just not over the edge. You know that you have the freedom that your content on your podcast can be whatever you want it to be. It can be whatever you want it to be. Isn't that exciting? Doesn't that fire you up? That if you want to educate, just like Molly, if you want to educate on a certain thing like mindset, those people are going to come into your leadership team. They're going to come into your team so much more confident because you knew what to give them from your podcast. It gives you the freedom to do that. And I'll tell you, I can sell podcasting 
through my podcast like nobody's business. I can do this much better (laughs) than I can in real life. Really, it's such freedom because I get fired up and I get so fired up to serve you in this way and to tell you, oh my goodness, the benefits of it. And so are you a network marketer? And are you learning how that strategic podcasting will up-level your marketing business, your network marketing business? As a network marketer, you're seeing how strategic podcasting will up-level your team, will up-level you as a leader. I hope you do. I want to read you one more quote. Um, This is from Good Pods, and it's 2024. And this article stated, network marketing podcasts cover a diverse array of topics. Yes, thank you, Lord. We're all individual, including effective sales and recruitment strategies, leadership development, building a successful team, leveraging social media for network marketing, product promotion, discussions on the challenges and opportunities within the industry. Listen to all that. Isn't that exciting? You don't have to look just like somebody that is in network marketing. Even if they're with the same company you are, you are unique. And you're going to cover what they said, diverse array of topics. You can include sales, recruitment strategies, development, successful teams, leveraging social media, product promotion, discussions on the challenges, the opportunities within your company. That is incredible. What an incredible advantage you have. You can engage and create that loyalty of the person behind the brand when you do this because it's you speaking. And you can have the freedom to talk about what maybe you don't have the time to talk about on social media. And so I want to encourage you with that. And so I I do want to encourage you, if you don't know Monique Scripp and Becky Baxter, they are incredible Coaches for network marketers, they have an incredible, when I say incredible, like I've seen the inside of it. I've been in a part of the Bible studies. I've seen the social media plan because I coached them for their podcast that they started. Go check it out. I'll put that in the show notes. They are incredible coaches. Their membership is amazing, affordable for everybody. Check it out. Okay. Anyway, they have a podcast. It's great. Um. But let's go back to that expert podcasting thing I talked about in the beginning. Okay, remember when I said that you can become an expert podcaster? And anybody can be a podcaster. Anybody can. But to be an expert podcaster is something. mm, It's something very different. And I, of course, went to the dictionary because my coaches in the past have have encouraged me to do that. And so I'm I'm doing it. Um, But the word expert is defined as a person who has a comprehensive, like full, and authoritative knowledge or skill in a particular area. An expert is defined as a person who has a comprehensive which means thorough, complete, has expertise, and authoritative, which is with authority, knowledge of a skill in a particular area. So why can you call yourself an expert? You're like, I don't know, Rand. I I don't know. Let me encourage you. Clients hire me because I've had experience with my first podcast, Friends of a Feather. It's coming up on eight years that I started that. And so clients hire me because of that experience, the eight years of experience, the experience of interviewing New York Times bestselling authors, the experience of talking with international speakers, interviewing them, and also doing it all as a one-man show from the ground up, like from level zero. But here's what I know. If clients hire me because I'm an expert in podcasting, then I bet you can call you an expert too. I would bet you have incredible experience in your topic, right? That's what we talked about with what 
an expert is defined as is somebody comprehensive, full. Now, do we know everything about everything? No, of course not. Come on. (laughs) But you have incredible experience in your topic, in your field. I bet you do. And you can do the other side of that expert, um, what it's defined as, is authoritative knowledge. I bet you can speak with authority because of your experience. Yeah, you can too. Clients can hire you too. You can be that expert. And I am so excited and fired up for you to call yourself an expert and to start this journey of podcasting. And I believe in you. I believe in you wholeheartedly. Listen, if I can do it and become an expert in my field, you can do it too. You probably already are an expert. Take it one step further. So if you are interested in starting your podcast, you're like, I'm in. I Like, I'm so in. <laughs> I'm jazzed for you because I see what's coming. That legacy that we talked about. More people will be changed because of you. So if you're interested in starting a podcast, I invite you to the Start Your Podcast Challenge. It's a three-day challenge. A gal who was in network marketing that took the challenge, the first challenge in January, she said, I am so thankful for your help in all of it for her to start a podcast. I really could not have done it without your direction and guidance. Oh, I love hearing that. Not because it's about me, because of, it's about her. And she is a network marketer who's starting her podcast. And she said this after three days of VIP coaching. I invite you. I invite you to join the challenge. There's a new one coming up. Every month we're having one. February, we're having one. So send me a DM or click the link to jump into the next one. And I can't wait to see you in there. Hey, I am so happy for you. I can't wait for what's going to happen after this episode. If you're not a network marketer and you're like, oh, I really liked it, and you have a friend that's in network marketing, send it to them. I bet they would really appreciate that from you. I don't want you to struggle because life is too short to just wing it. I love you, friend. See you next time. Bye.